We all know that with our health, our relationships, our careers, our relationships, did I say that already? <laughs> our finances, with virtually every area of our life, there are these inevitable setbacks and challenges and frustrations and failures that we are gonna face. Like I've lived much of my life this way and still sometimes do, it's a process, but kind of thinking that everything's supposed to go smoothly all of the time. <laughs> like nothing's supposed to go wrong. And when things go wrong, it's this big shock to me. Like, why is this happening? <laughs> this is so unfair. This wasn't part of the plan. This wasn't part of my plan. I'm really angry. <laughs> and that's just kind of the end of it. So in this video, we're gonna dive into specifically what to do when these things happen and to normalize and validate some of the things that you're feeling in these moments and just having insight on why you're having these feelings can really help you to process them in the moment and just to be aware that they're happening. When we shine a light on things, it becomes a lot more easy to deal with. And then if we have some steps in our mind that we can walk through or expect that we're gonna go through when we're dealing with these setbacks and these failures, then we're more patient and kind with ourselves in the process because we know it's normal. We know we can't skip through it. And we also know that we have tools to work through it and eventually get past it. One of the hardest ones I find, I mean, there's all sorts of hard stuff in this life, but one that <laughs> gets me is when you're really excited about something, really hopeful about something, whether it's something you've worked really hard on or something you've heard about that you wanna try, maybe it's for your health recovery, something that a lot of people have had success with and maybe it was expensive and you had to save a lot of money and you just have this idea in your head about what this all means for you. Because of this thing, this thing that I'm doing, this project I'm trying, this new relationship I'm in, whatever it is, it's gonna transform my life. And then it doesn't. For whatever reason, it just falls flat or maybe even feels like it's sending you back further than you were before. There's such a process there. There's such a grief process. There's so many emotions and it takes time to work through it. And it looks different for everybody. And it looks different for every situation that you personally will go through in your life. And it's important to understand that when these things happen, they can have a sort of tainting effect to virtually everything else in your life. Because if one thing doesn't go well, if you weighed it as significant in your mind, whatever it was, it can start to have this ripple effect where you feel like just your whole life isn't going anywhere. Like nothing's working. You're a failure at everything. And you start to think, like, have I been deluding myself? Like, am I actually getting nowhere? And it distorts your view, your perception of reality. It gives you an inaccurate picture of your life as a whole because you are have put so much importance on this one thing that it's now making you question everything. If you were wrong about this, what about everything else? And what does this mean for my life in general? I'm doomed. I should just give up. <laughs> um, yeah. And it can be really jarring because until recently you might have been really optimistic and really hopeful and felt like you're in this whole other place in your life and your trajectory my favorite word was just going towards the sky like things are just taking off and you like i haven't felt this good in a while I mean, maybe not perfect it's not like you're you know i don't know <laughs> not like everything in your life is sparkly and shiny and amazing but overall you just have been feeling good about things and then so quickly you can go from there to a place where you're feeling frustrated and hopeless and like you wanna give up. And these things, these setbacks can feel like failures and even if they're not our fault, and they're usually not, there can be an element of self-blame in there and self-criticism and that is a very slippery slope towards shame. And shame, different from blame, blame is I made a mistake, somebody made a mistake, Guilt is, I did something bad. Shame is, I am bad. I am a screw up. I am going nowhere. I am hopeless. Which is why we need these tools that we're gonna talk about right now in this video to work through these moments so that you don't get to that place 
and get stuck and have to go through that nightmare of internalizing whatever it is that's happening and just know how to work yourself out of it. All right, so here are five steps, five things to go through to remember to help you to get through these moments when they happen. The first step is to acknowledge it because by pretending that it isn't happening is the best way to ensure that whatever this is will have a negative impact on you for the longest time possible because you can shove it down and shove it down, but it's not gonna go away. It's always gonna be there. 30 years from now, you might have to deal with this if you don't deal with it today. And who knows the damage it does over those 30 years. So you need to give it space. You need to give yourself space and time and permission to process this and feel this, whatever that might be. And the feelings that you go through might have stages as well. It might start out with things like anger and rage and frustration and denial. And from there, it might progress into different feelings, more things more like sadness or hopelessness and depression. And how long this takes is gonna vary on you, on someone else, on the situation. And each situation, depending on other factors in your life, you might have a different reaction to. Like this exact thing might've happened to you before it, and you got through it fairly quickly and mostly okay. But for whatever reason this time, it's really hit you hard because there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of things going in. So it's a bit of trusting your own gut, trusting that you are gonna know that time, that you're gonna be honest with yourself in this process about how long is enough time to sit and feel and be in it? And when is that moment where sitting and feeling and being in it is no longer serving you? And at what point it's just holding you back and keeping you stuck and it's time to move on and not forget about it, but start going through the rest of the steps that are gonna help move you past this. All right, step two. A good way to start to transition out of that step one of acknowledging and feeling and accepting that this crappy thing has happened and it's making you feel a certain kind of way is to get some perspective on the situation. And how you can do this is by zooming out in your life. Take a step back and look at the bigger picture of everything that's happening. Does this one setback, this one failure, whatever it is, does it really mean that you're going nowhere? Does it really mean that you're a failure at everything? Does it really mean that nothing's working in your life? Step back and look at how many things are going well and then take some time, significant time, to make a list of those things. Write down everything that's going well, that you were doing well, that you're proud of about yourself, that you've learned that you didn't know last week or last month or last year, and picture all of it sort of like a pie chart. If your life was a pie chart divided up into chunks of things going well and things not going well, this one setback that you're trying to get over, how big of a slice would it actually be on the pie. I suspect it's probably not that big if you're honest with yourself about how but how many other good things you've got going right now. All right, step three. And this is an important one. Step three is to learn from it because no setback, no failure is a wasted experience if you can take things away from it that will help you in the future in your life. And there's stuff to be learned from every setback and every failure. And although it's probably not your fault, if you take some time to really analyze it from a non-judgy way, just think about like, like as an anthropologist or a detective, like, hmm, let's look at the situation. Maybe like, okay, maybe I could have researched this a little bit more before diving into it. Or maybe I took something on in a season in my life where I didn't have space to take this thing on. And it really was setting myself up to fail. So what can you take away from this that you will use moving forward to help you when you face similar types of situations to go into them from a better place so that you can set yourself up to be more successful and avoid some of these things that have tripped you up in the past. And while you're learning from whatever this was, take a moment and just reframe it. Think about, think about this thing, this setback, this failure as a part of your success origin story. Picture yourself, your grand, amazing self in the future, whatever that looks like, and you're sitting and you're talking to somebody and you're telling them all about how you got here, this amazing place that you are. 
and how it hasn't always been that easy and there have been bumps on the road. There are things like this one time, this time. It's a part of your story. It's a part of who's, what's gonna get you where you're trying to go. One of those learning experiences that got you to this place of being strong and amazing and successful and awesome and just loving life. Let this empower you, whatever it is. Let it make you stronger. Let it make you more unstoppable as you move forward. All right, step four. Step four is to forgive yourself. Now, chances are this wasn't your fault, but also there's a decent chance that you're being a bit hard on yourself right now. So take a moment to forgive yourself for not being perfect. Give yourself permission to not be perfect, to not always get everything right, to not know everything. Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know until you knew it. Self-compassion in all of this is key. Be kind to yourself. Picture that this, whatever this is that's happening to you right now or in that moment, is happening to a friend of yours. Now have that conversation. Someone, a friend of yours that you love and you respect and you care about, what would you say to them? Like really get honest about what you would think and what you would say to them in that situation. And now turn that back on yourself because you deserve that same kindness and compassion as well. All right, now step five is to let it go and move on. Most of the stress or much of the stress that we feel in life is because we are either thinking about the past, stressing about things in the past, or worrying about things, hypothetical things in the future that haven't even yet happened. If you can put it down, leave it in the past behind you, like think about this moment that you're in right now, this moment right here, watching this video, this very instant, what do you have this very second to be extremely stressed about? I'm not saying there aren't stresses in your life, but in this snapshot of a moment in the now, where you are right now, what, how many things do you have to worry about this second? There's a really good chance that a lot of what you're carrying is stuff from the past and stuff that you're worried about in the future. So whatever you can do to pull yourself into this moment and keep yourself in this moment is going to reduce that heavy load that you're carrying by so much. So whatever that setback or that failure was, figure out how to put it down, let it go, and let it be a part of your past. And then put your effort into something that will bring you so much more value, which is figuring out how to infuse some appreciation, some gratitude, some happiness, some joy into this moment that you're in right now. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to link on the screen here another one that I think you might also enjoy. It's about three ways to work to keep your nervous system in a calm, relaxed, you know, parasympathetic state, because so much of this is about mindset and about having tools to manage stress and just to keep ourselves in a better place. And if you got value from this video, I invite you to consider subscribing and please let me know in the comments what topics you would like to hear more about in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in this next video.